Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished solving almost all the problems from here. If there is any problem at all that you have trouble with, if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find all the solutions to the math problems from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book happens to contain exactly the same problems in most cases and appearing exactly on the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you can see the original solutions. You, can find, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are very important questions. They are still a big part of the exam. Unfortunately, the newer books do not provide us enough practice questions on quantitative comparison. For that reason, from day number 401, we began solving some problems out of this book, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now, we are on page number 280. Please turn to it. Page number 280, problem number 13. Now, problem number 13 is something that we did yesterday already on day number 438. We did that already. Today, we're going to do a, a problem very similar to problem number 13, a bonus problem. I'm going to set it up. And once I finish setting it up, I want you to pause the video and solve the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together. Do you understand? Here we, here we go. We are told that a squared, we are told a squared is equal to 25. We are also told that b squared is equal to 36. And what we are being asked to compare is column A and column B, A versus B. Very simple, very straightforward question. I'll give you a few seconds, five, five seconds to pause and unpause the video, do the problem yourself. Here we go then. We are told that a squared equals 25. That implies that a has to be either positive 5 or a negative 5. Similarly, we know that since b squared we are told equals 36, that implies that b would have to be either a positive 6 or a negative 6. The problem here is that we do not know which one is this, which one it is. Maybe a is positive 5, maybe a is negative 5, maybe b is positive 6, maybe b is negative 6. For example, if a happens to be positive 5 and b happens to be positive 6, or if a happens to be negative 5 and b happens to be positive 6, the answer in this case would be b. But if b happens to be negative 6, answer would be a in both cases. Answer would be a before it is b. That's all. The answer is d. That's all. We don't know what we're comparing with what. We do not know. Maybe it's positive. Maybe if b is positive six, and then positive six will always be more than positive five or negative five. Answer would be b. But if b happens to be negative six, then negative six will always be less than, regardless of what a is. If b is negative six, then it doesn't matter whether a is positive five or negative five. In both cases, quantity a would be bigger. Since we do not know which which scenario we're dealing with, the answer is d. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Right here. Very simple one, very quick one. We are told that p squared equals 9 and q squared equals 9 as well. Same exact situation, nothing has changed here. Column A, column B, you know what we are going to do. We are being asked to compare p versus q. Well, knowing that p squared equals 9, that tells us that p has to be either positive 3 or negative 3. Similarly, knowing that q squared equals 9 means q has to be either positive 3 or negative 3. But we do not know which scenario we are dealing with. We do not know exactly which value p and q take. They could be positive 3 or negative 3. So if one happens to be positive and the other one has to be negative, the answer would be a. Or the other way around. You get the idea. Or the other way around. We do not know. The answer is d. Now these two bonus problems actually I had meant to do them yesterday and I finished the video and, and I closed the video and I forgot to do them and I realized afterwards so I wanted to get it out of my system. Let's do number 14. Number 
like I said, these problems are these two problems are very similar to the ones we did yesterday, number 13. Number 14, again, as soon as I finish setting it up, pause the video and do it yourself. Number 14, in the real exam, only 38% of the people had luck with it, about 40% of the people missed it. We are told that the average, average for boys equals 90. We are told that the average for girls equals 81. We are also told that overall average in the class is 84. So they have just taken they have just taken an exam. The teacher finds out that the average score for the boys was 90, average score for the girls was 81. We are also told that the overall score for the class was 84. And here is what we are being asked to compare. Well, you can pretty much guess what they are going to ask us to compare. Column A, column B, column B. We are being asked to compare the number of boys versus the number of girls. The number of boys versus the number of girls. I am too lazy to write everything out. B stands for number of boys, number of boys versus number of girls. Pause the video, do it yourself. I'll give you five seconds to do that. Okay, here we go. First, we're going to do the problem as we should do in the exam, because in the exam, time is of the essence. We don't want to spend an inordinate amount of time solving a problem, nor do we want to show off our knowledge. In the exam, never ever try to sit there and solve the problem in a classical way. Try to show off your knowledge, try to show off how much algebra you know, because nobody really gives a damn. Do you understand? Nobody's, nobody looks at your work. It's, it's the computer who's grading it. Doing the work is not going to give you any extra credit. In the real exam, you, your only concern should be to get in, get the loot, and get the hell out. Don't hang around, you understand? Get in, get the loot, and get the hell out as, as soon as possible. So here's what's going on. If, if it turns out, if it turns out, if, if we had same number of boys, same number of boys and girls. What do you suppose it would happen if, if we had the same number? We do not know, but if we had the same number of boys, what do you suppose should have happened? If we had the same number of boys, the overall average, the overall average would have been, would have been the average of these two numbers. There is our 81. And here is our 90. If you have five boys and five girls, and if you are told that the average of boys is 90 and the average of girls is 81, and as long as there are five boys and five girls, the overall average in the class is going to be the average of these two numbers. Because when you have five boys and five girls, they have the same weight. It's, it's the same as saying you have one boy and one girl. Whether you have one boy and one girl, or whether you have 100 boys and 100 girls, or 200 boys and 200 girls, or 1,000 boys and 1,000 girls, it doesn't matter, they have the same weight. And therefore the overall average in the class would be the average of these two numbers, 81 and 90. The average of these two numbers, 81 and 90, is how much? 81 plus, uh, 81 plus 90 divided by 2, 80 plus 90, you see? 80 plus 90 would have been exactly in the middle, 80 plus 90 would have been 170, 170 divided by 2 would be exactly 85. This is going to be 85 and a half. That's not the point, but anyway, it's 85 and a half. We are told that the actual average is actually 84. I'm, I'm, I'm going too much of a leisurely pace, I don't know why. I, I, I feel a little... Anyway, the actual average is right here, 84. This is the actual average. This is the actual. Because the actual... I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm not going to write everything down because... Because, because of the fact that the actual average is below the average of these two numbers, it tells us that the average is tilted more towards the girls. The girls carry more weight, which is why they're pulling the average down. And that tells you, this implies that we must have, we must have more girls. That's what it is. In the real exam, we don't have to write everything down, we don't have to write anything down, we don't have to do anything, we just have to think in our mind and realize that if we had the same number of boys and girls, the average should have been 85, 85 and a half. 
since 84 is not the average, 84 is below 85 and a half or 85, or it doesn't matter. It, actually, even though it is 85 and a half, but we don't have to be so technical. Because the, the 84 actual average is below the average of the two, two extreme, then one side is pulling it down than the other. We have more of one, people, one type of people than the other. We must have more girls. We must have more girls. The number of girls is more than the boys. The answer is B. And that's all that is required. That's all that is required here, as far as the exam is concerned. From this point on, starting from this particular second, all the rest of the video that you're going to watch is going to be a sheer waste of time. It will be bloody stupid thing to do in the exam, what we are about to embark upon. We're going to do it purely for learning purposes. We would not do it. We would not have done it had it been a real exam. What we're going to do right now is to actually figure out how many boys and how many girls there are in the class, so what, what the actual situation is, purely for the learning purposes. As far as the exam is concerned, this is all you do. Enough of the talk, I'm going to pick up speed and, and, and get going. We need the room, so before, before I raise it, I'll give you an unobstructed view. Okay, here we go. We are told that the overall average is 84. Overall average has to be this has to equal to overall average overall average has to equal to the total number of points that is earned by everybody in the class divided by total number of people. Total points divided by total people total number of points that are earned by the boys, let's call it total number of points earned by the boys and total number of girls earned by the boys, let's call it T subscript G, total number of points earned by the boys, total number of points earned by the girls, divided by the number of boys plus the girls. Now don't, don't get concerned that sometimes I use capital B and sometimes I use small b, it really has no meaning, I'm just sloppy, do you understand? So TB, T subscript B stands for total number of points earned by boys. And how do we find the total number of points that are earned by boys? The total number of points that are earned by boys would have to equal the number of boys, which we are calling B, number of boys which we are calling B, times their average. Times their average. Similarly, the total number of points that are earned by the girl has to equal the number of girls in the class times their average. Let's put it in here and see what happens, okay? We could do it on the top. Watch what happens. So, TB, TB here equals 90, 90 times B plus TG which equals 81 times G over B plus G and we are told that the overall average is what the hell was the overall average? 84. Okay, watch what happened. I'm gonna pick up now speed because now it's just algebra problem, that's what it is. We need we don't need any of this thing, we need the room. Let's pick up speed and solve it. I don't know if I want to show you all the baby step or not. There is no need for you to not to show all the baby step. 90 plus B, 90 B plus 81 G has to equal 84 times B plus G which is same as 84B plus 84, 84G. Bring all the Bs on one side, bring all the Gs on the other side, and you will find that 6B equals 3Gs, which in turn implies that G equals 2 times B. There it is, voila. What this tells us is that, what this tells us is that, there are twice as many girls as there are boys. If there are 10 boys, if there are 10 boys, we need 20 girls. There are 20 there are twice as many girls in the class as there are boys. That's what we said here. The number of girls has to be more than the boys because they were pulling the average down. The average was not sitting right in the middle. The average was tilted to the lower end because the girls had a lower average and the overall average, because it was not the midpoint, it was tilted to the left. They were pulling it down. That tells us that there are more of them. It turns out there are in fact actually twice as many girls. There are in fact actually twice as many girls. I'm going to show it to you here by using by using two examples, two very quick examples. Let's pretend, let's pretend that we have two girls and one boy. Two boy, two girls and one boy. In which case we have two girls. See this this equation right here. 
two girls, you see? G is two, 81. Two times 81 plus one boy. We have one boy here, B equals one. So it's one times 90 divided by two plus one. Two boys and one girl. And what are you supposed to find? We'll find 162 plus 90 over three and that is going to be 252 divided by 3, 252 divided by 3, and let's find out what 252 divided by 3 is. Let's do it here. 252 divided by 3. First of all, first of all, is 252 divisible by 3? First of all, is it even divisible by 3? Well, let's find out, shall we? How do we know if a number is divisible by 3? If the sum of the digits of the number, SUM sum of the digits of the number is divisible by 3, the number is divisible by 3. And of course this number would have to be divisible by 3 because we know it's a round, round number of 84. It has to be divisible by 4. If our work is correct, this will work out to be 84. 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 5 is 9, and since 9 is divisible by 3, this number is divisible by 3. How many 3's in a 2? 2 has no 3's. 2 has no 3's. That 2 goes and joins the 5, becomes 25. How many 3's in a 25? 25 has 8 3's. 8 3's are 25. The remaining one goes and joins the two becomes 12. How many threes in a 12? 12 has four threes. What do you know? What do you know? Overall average is 84. What if we had instead of instead of two and instead of two and one, instead of two and one, what if we had, I'm gonna raise the middle part, we'll do it here. What if we had what if we had 30 boys and 60 girls? How do we do the work for that? Same exact way we did here. So instead of two boys, we have we have we have instead of instead of I should have put it the other way around because that way is consistent. 60 girls and 30 boys in the same order as here. So instead of two, instead of two girls, instead of two girls, we have 60 girls times 81. Plus instead of one boy, we have 30 boys. Instead of one boys, we have 30 boys times their average divided by 60 divided by 60 plus 90 what which happens watch what happens here we see 60 here we see 30 let's take out 30 as a common factor let's take out 30 as a common factor from here and here if we take out 30 as a common factor 30 divided 60 divided by 30 is 2 2 times 81 plus we took out the 30 as a common factor so it's just 1 times 90 over 90 and 30 is going to go into 90. What do you see? What do you see? It's the exact same thing as this one. 2 times 81, 2 times 81, plus 1 times 90 divided by 3. Exact same thing as this one. There are twice as many girls as there are boys. But in the real exam, it will be bloody foolish thing to actually do all of this. It wasn't necessary. This question in a real exam should have taken no more than 10 seconds just to realize that since we're pulling the average down, the girls are pulling the average down, there are more of them. Because the average of the two numbers, two extreme, is 85 and a half. The overall average the total is 84. There must be more girls because they're pulling them down. That's all it is. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.